Hey guys, Mal here, and today we're going to talk about the modular cars in Rust. I expected to see a lot more people in cars than I've seen since they dropped the patch. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here wondering why, so I decided to take a closer look at them. Firstly, let's look at what parts are involved in all of this. So for starters, we've got the frame. There's two, three, and four slot frames. And then we've got the engine parts, which have five components. The carburetor, crankshaft, pistons, spark plugs, and valves. There's also three different tiers of quality, low, medium, and high. The better the quality, the better the car will perform. The number of engines any car has dictates how many engine parts you're going to need. Lastly, we have the modules. There's three cockpit modules, the standard cockpit, the cockpit with an engine, and the beastie armored cockpit. You must have at least one of these on a vehicle to drive it. Now after that you've got a few options. If you're wanting to transport a bunch of people, you've got two options. One is this dodgy flatbed which comes in a small and a large and takes one or two vehicle slots. If you don't want people having to dodgily crouch in a flatbed from point A to point B, you might want to invest in one of the passenger modules. Much like the flatbed, it comes in a small and a large and takes one or two vehicle slots. However, your passengers get to chill out in seats, have a little protection from the vehicle, and have a much easier time shooting people as you drive around. If you don't care about having room for extra passengers, then there's a few other modules you might be interested in. Firstly, the fuel tank. So this thing takes up two vehicle slots, but it can store a ridiculous 200 litres of water. That's 40 blue water jugs. Depending on where you've built your base, you may not have convenient access to fresh water. This will sort out your farms, hydration needs, and pools for a good while. The downside being that the vehicle is now dedicated to this, as you can't remove the fuel tank if there is liquid inside it. Alternatively, you can make 10 of the water barrels and actually store it all to free up the vehicle. Next up is the storage module. It takes up one vehicle slot and gives you a 3x6 box. Not bad considering if you're using the right car frame, you could have three of these as well as two passengers all carrying loot from a raid or to a new location to build. Lucky last for the modules is the engine module. Now there's only two reasons you'd be interested in these. The first being you're using one of the two cockpits that doesn't have a built-in engine. The other being you're trying to make a car go as fast as possible. It's a bad idea, but definitely do it because it's fun. One last piece of equipment that I almost forgot about, the modular car lift. You're going to want one of these if you want to use cars. They need a whopping 20 power, however thankfully you don't need this thing running all the time, only when you want to swap up modules on your vehicles. Now let's take a look at how all this magic happens. Stumbling across a mostly burnt out car on the side of the road is awesome, however unlike with the old heli spawns, you can't just throw fuel in and away you go. Instead, there's actually some work to be done here. You need to fill the engine with all of the missing engine parts, and I'd highly recommend repairing the car because these things take damage very easily. So where do you actually get the engine parts that you need? You can find the low quality engine parts in the little red boxes you see at the trash piles. They actually have a ridiculously high spawn percentage, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. You can BP each part for 75 scrap. If you want the medium quality parts, you'll have to hit up the bandit camp with a bunch of scrap. Once you've bought the parts for scrap, you can then either use them or BP them for 125 scrap per part. Lastly, there's the high quality parts. You're heading to the outpost for these with a big old bag of scrap. Sadly, you can't BP the high quality parts. So if you lose a vehicle, you're going to have to rebuy them if you want the best performance from your vehicles. All right, so you've got your engine parts and you've found a busted up vehicle by the side of the road. Fantastic. Repair the vehicle, throw the engine parts in, some fuel in the back, and you're good to go. Now if you don't want to get domed and have someone steal your car, I'd recommend taking that thing straight back to your base and locking it up in a garage. Next you're going to want to get your hands on the car lift. They do have a low chance to drop in the high tier boxes, however your alternative if you don't find one is ducking to bandit camp with 175 scrap to buy it, and another 125 scrap if you want to research it. Okay, looking good. So now you've got your car, engine parts, and the car lift. Throw your car on there and add a lock to it. This will craft a physical key in your inventory. So while your car isn't safe if you die, you can park it and hide the key in a stash. Or if you're just doing an outpost run, then you'll know your car is safe while you do your trading. 
So now that your car is properly secure, it's time to take the engine parts, grab some mats for repairing, some fuel, and then head out to find another car. What modules you're after depends on what you're wanting to do with cars. Let's say you really wanted an armored cockpit. So you find a car that has one, you fix it up and sort out the engine and fuel, then bring it back to base and onto the car lift. Now the reason that you brought it back to base is because you can't remove car modules unless it's on a car lift. Get it on one and rip the armored cockpit off it, research it, and craft it. Rinse and repeat for any other modules you're after. I know this may seem like a lot to take in, but honestly once you give it a go and you get into the swing of it, it's really not that bad. Plus the modular cars can actually be crazy helpful in certain circumstances. So the question is, are cars worth your time? They make getting around much faster, they draw less attention than the helis, they can be utilized for a bunch of stuff. Honestly, I'd say yeah, they're totally worth it. The one major downside to them is how quickly they decay. That being said, I have the same gripe with helis. In my opinion, if they're stored inside, they shouldn't decay. A quick pro tip before we finish this up. If you have two armored cockpits, an engine module, and a three slot frame, you can make a mini tank. It seats four people, each with their own little armored peak slot to own noobs as you casually drive to the supermarket. Be careful though, a group that knows their cars might be smart enough to shoot out your engine, and then you're pretty much fucked. Thanks for making it through the whole video. It really means a lot to me that you're watching and hopefully enjoying my content. If you felt like showing some love, I've got a little Patreon page going. For $1 you can get yourself a fancy rank on my Discord and an invite to events I host like Rust Escape Rooms. Speaking of Discord, if you haven't gotten involved in it yet, then check out the description for a link. Lastly, but certainly not least, I want to give a shout out to Digital and Squish over at Corrosion Hour. They have put some serious time and effort into their site over the years, and it really is one of the best resources for Rust Info. If you haven't heard of it, head over to corrosionhour.com to check them out. There's a link in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.